As countries slowly begin to reopen their economies, big data is being used to help prevent further spreading of COVID-19. One way is contact tracing. The virus can be kept in check by identifying new positive cases, then tracking down other people those cases may have been in contact with. Contact tracing can be done manually over the phone by employing lots of people or through smartphone apps. Apple and Google are working together on improving their technology to make it easier for contact tracing apps to work more effectively. But in response to concerns around government access to personal data and privacy, other organizations have stepped up with solutions of their own. Dr. Po Shen Lo is a math professor at Carnegie Mellon University and a Hertz Foundation Fellow, which is a network of scientists and engineers who've pledged to make their skills available during national emergencies. He and his team came up with a contact tracing app for Android and iOS called Novid. At the moment that you install the app, we don't ask you for anything. No mobile phone number, no email address, no name, not even a username, nothing. Actually, what happens is as soon as you install it, it generates a random number, and that random number is your user ID. It actually doesn't even tell you your user ID, so that you wouldn't be able to even accidentally tell anyone else what that user ID is. The way that all of this stuff is put together is that the server collects all of this non-personal data, such as somebody called user number 362 has alter ego 7351, and that person was around alter ego 216 at 2.45 p.m. Eastern Time on April 28, 2020. And the server has that. And the messages are very vague. In, well, very vague in the sense of making it very difficult to track down who it was that gave you a potential infection. The messages say things like, somebody just self-reported a positive test. During the time that they were potentially contagious, they spent at least half an hour with you. Dr. Lowe says what makes Novid unique is the use of both Bluetooth and ultrasound signals to determine past contacts, and his team also ruled out GPS for privacy concerns. We want to have no GPS data so that even if somebody were to force us to give any information that we have, we, we know nothing about you. Then the other, uh, the other types of technologies you could use are Bluetooth, which is very nice, but as you know, if you have Bluetooth headphones, the Bluetooth signal strength is quite strong, and in fact, you could even have something that senses in another room. So we added ultrasound as well. The reason we added ultrasound is because ultrasound does not go through walls, and also, sort of like how sonar works, you can use ultrasound to determine how far away something is by making a sound and seeing when the other device hears it. Guy Nakamura and his team at Track Together are using data reporting and symptom tracking to try and help researchers and public health departments, including the UK's National Health Service. Users fill out a basic survey about their symptoms, and the only personal information they give is their age and zip or postal code. That data is aggregated to determine what areas of a country need the most help. We're really trying to keep it simple and allow people to report symptoms that don't require official tests. Um, so it doesn't give you a perfectly accurate picture as to how far the virus has spread, but it will give health authorities and public health experts some sort of vague idea of, of where the disease may have spread to, where they otherwise might not have known. Nakamura says Track Together has also partnered with both academic institutions and celebrity athletes from the Premier League and NFL to help spread the word and convince more people to report in. He also believes the minimal amount of information collected should help allay fears of privacy breaches or data theft. I think what we've tried to do is really steer clear of all the kind of very much location-based data that contact tracing apps are collecting. So we don't necessarily have, have the same issues that other apps might be facing from a privacy perspective because we're not monitoring every single movement that a user takes. Um, so I think that's really how we're trying to steer clear of that because we fundamentally believe the simple data that we are collecting can still drive immense value um, globally and locally. In the case of data and reporting, some studies have found that few people who self-report COVID-19 symptoms actually have the virus. For contact tracing apps, a big challenge is simply getting enough of the population to sign up. Some data modelers have said the ideal number is 60% of a population, but that is considered unrealistic in actual practice. To put it in perspective, Singapore has a population of about 5.7 million people with higher levels of trust in government, but also higher amounts of government control and surveillance than Western nations. Even so, only about 26% of the population have downloaded its contact tracing app.